from the beginning as it was. Okay. So it's, it's, it's really, uh, if you've you not seen it, go to gopro.com and okay. see all these kind of a mountain biking and surfing stuff and, you know, the parachuting and it's really, really cool. And they have it on the helmet. Oh, okay. And you, oh, you that's know, right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Dennis has one of these on his uh, snowboarding helmet, I think, sometimes. Yeah. Who's yeah. My, our CEO. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, and really, you know, you get this really, really, how do you say? dogma feeling you are into what's really happening it's a really wide yeah. area and so on so i thought that maybe you could bring this into the you know the company profile as well you know, sure. so using, you know yeah a, every video you, you know you, you're doing it it could be on the gopro so if you have like 10 of these cameras on your company that can just circulate and everybody oh, could be out there maybe someday maybe someday <laughs> <laughs> so this is erin how do you how do you spell that erin e-r-i-n yeah Erin, are you saying that? Yes, Erin. Erin. That's a nice name. What is nice Thank you. Term? It's is an it Irish name. It's an Irish name. Yes. Are you Irish from the beginning? Uh, no, I'm, I'm from Seattle, You're but from my Seattle. family is part Irish, yes. Okay. So you, you come up from Google from the beginning? From no? Google. I started at Google in 2005 and worked there until 2010 when I left to come to Foursquare. Okay, for five years. Yeah, four and a, a little over four and a half years. Wow, that must have been an amazing journey. Right? It was, yeah. It grew quite a bit from the time I started to the time I left. When I started, I was always in the New York office, not in the headquarters mm -hmm. in California, but mm -hmm. I think we were 500-something people when I started in the mm -hmm. New York office. And by the time I left, it was 2,200 in this huge office building in uh, the Meatpacking District mm -hmm. of New York. Now I think there are over 2,500 oh. in New York. So yes. On the communication department? All the time oh, no. That's um, mostly engineering mm -hmm. and then some salespeople. And then the communications team in New York was about 12 people maybe when I left. Mm -hmm. I think they've grown quite a bit since then in the last couple mm -hmm. of years. But have you been an engineer too? too? No, I, no, I worked on engineering communications, but I was okay. never an engineer. I studied communications and psychology. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So what happens with the, the, the company culture during these years? At Google. At Google, it changed a lot. I mean, it's, yeah. it, uh, you know, when it was, when I first started, it was a lot smaller. Everyone kind of knew everyone else. You mm. saw a lot of familiar faces in, in a cafe at lunch. Um, there was a little bit more communication between teams. Mm. And I think just naturally, as a company gets bigger, you mm. lose some of that. Mm. You start, you know, you don't know as many people when you go to different events. Yeah. Roles become more siloed. You can't really have your hands in a million different things. So it just changes a bit. And that's, mm. Part of the reason I wanted to go to Foursquare is it had that energy again of being small mm. and having your hands and everything and mm. everyone knowing each other and working together towards this common mm. goal. Mm. I, I really love your, your photos there. I, oh, thank as you. As a matter of fact, um, I'm the founder of my news desk uh -huh. and we've been working with this company for, for like eight years now and it was exactly uh, this It looked this exactly kind of the same, culture. yeah. And now we are, we are like 100 plus people there. Oh, wow. And things are going to you know, change. It's, it's hard to, you know, keep the culture to yeah. this, uh, how do you, uh, and, and, and when I, when I see the, the bigger uh, ones, the pictures, yeah. the new uh, office, yes. and every gets more you know, structured, yeah. the investors coming in, yeah. they have different kind of a, you know, approach and so on. Yeah, it's funny, when I started, you know, we would have our team meetings just huddled around the garbage cans <laughs> in a corner of the room, we had yeah. one whiteboard, and now you saw we have that mm. beautiful space that fits mm. hundreds of people, we have video conference in San Francisco, it's very different, but we have done a good job, I would say, maintaining the culture of the company, mm. and mm. I think a big piece of that is our CEO, Dennis Crowley, who himself is just very fun and charismatic. Mm. He really makes an effort to, you know, engage with everyone on the team. He has office hours every week where mm. anyone in the company can come and talk to him about anything mm. that's on their mind. Mm. It can be product related, culture related, an idea for something new we should be mm. doing. So he's very accessible and tries to keep things fun and light. And I think mm. it just rubs off on everyone. And so we have mm. a really quirky, unique culture, but mm. it's still a lot of fun. It still feels very much mm. like and the founders are still there. And yeah. You know, yeah. Know, one, of, one of our co-founders uh, recently decided to leave the company, mm -hmm. but Dennis, the CEO and the other mm. co-founder is still mm. there going okay. strong, very much involved day okay. to day. Yeah. And the other co-founder is still on the board. So mm. he's very mm. involved as mm. well. Mm. So when it comes to communication now, you have a small team, right? Was it 12 people? 12 people. And that's all of marketing and communications, oh. but um, only myself and one other person half time doing PR. Mm. Yeah. How could it be 12 people and you are 100? It's a pretty big communication team. It is. Compared to, to how many people yeah, they are. Yeah, I mean, the most, I think about 75, probably 85 now, people at the company are um, engineering and products. Mm. So that's definitely the biggest group. Mm. And then the rest of it is, you know, business and operations like mm. our team. Yeah, I think that it speaks a lot to how the founders and you know, the other execs feel about our work. Mm. Like they've allowed us to bring on more people as the mm. company's gotten bigger because they see the value in communicating with users and getting mm. our story out there in the press. And so mm. they continue to invest mm. in marketing and communications, mm. which is really mm. great for mm. us. Mm. 
And now it's everybody, e everything is about, you know, relations, right? Yeah. And engagement and so on. It's nothing new really, but it is, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and you must have a great opportunity within the your, your users, like mm -hmm. almost 20 million users. Mm -hmm. But the question is, how engaged are they in Foursquare? You know, how? Yeah, they're very engaged. <laughs> I mean, we see we see five million check-ins a day, as mm. I mentioned, and uh, we we're starting to see an increasing number of people that are going into the application and not actually checking in. So mm. the use is, is actually quite a bit higher. A lot mm. of people just go in to see where their friends are, or if they're at a restaurant and they want to see what other people recommended that they have at that mm. restaurant, mm. or they want to search for something and explore, which is our personalized recommendation mm. engine. You know, they're looking for a bar or a park or a restaurant nearby mm. that they might mm. like, and they look to Foursquare to get that information, mm. but they might, might mm. not necessarily always check in. Mm. So yeah, the engagement is really high. We're actually mm. happy with it, and we're continuing to see it go up. But did they check in at um, you know Madison, Madison Square Center, or did they check in at Fours Foursquare? Do you see what I mean? You know, are, are, are the Foursquare as a brand uh -huh. really you know there in their minds? I think so. Um, you mean, in when I think when people think of location, we've always had a laser focus on location, yeah. sharing your location, people, the relationship between people and places. So I think when people think of location, they think of mm. Foursquare. Mm. Um, and we're continuing to you know, gain mind share as we get older. But mm. yeah, I think I think we have good are, brand are awareness. You, you know, I hate to say this, but are you using this, uh, the, your, your users, or, or, or I, they are or you know, only there, or, or and you just keep on doing a, a better, better product, or are you using them in your communication strategy as well, D actively? You know, you do, do we? Do you mean do we lean on them to help us yeah, get the word out about Foursquare? Yeah, yeah, no, come on, this is a community. Are you trying no. to build a community of these guys? I or? don't really do. I mean, it's funny. I mentioned earlier that we have a really engaged user base. I think it's really unique, and I think mm. it's partially due to the fact that the founders were very great about being responsive to people mm. in the early days, but. We don't have to ask them to do that. They go mm. out on their own, and you know, actually, mm. next week or two weeks from now, there's a holiday called Foursquare Day. Mm. It's an international day uh, to celebrate Foursquare that's totally organized by users wow. all around the world. I think they had something like a thousand meetups last year, um, all sorts of events. We had uh, mayors in 19 cities officially recognize Foursquare Day, and that's all. That all started from the users. That wasn't something that we came up with as a marketing, mm. you know. Um, gimmick. It was all them, and so it's mm. awesome to have a user base that that's that mm. engaged, mm. and we don't really have to push them to do that. I think it's just you know we continue to build a great product, and we mm. get great feedback mm. from them. Did you hear? Um, did you hear this uh, guy uh, who, who was represented uh, the the World Economic Forum? Oh no, I missed him. as well. Uh, I heard that he mentioned Foursquare. He though. mentioned Foursquare, right. but he said, as in, you know, Foursquare. Is, of course, it's just a game, but anyway. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh -huh. And he said it's game, and and from the beginning, uh -huh. w w I remember, you know, it was all about badges, and right. you know, all that. Is for from from your point of view, it's still a game, or is it something more useful than that? We think it's we think it's much more obviously. There are a lot of game mechanics in it, mm -hmm. like the badges and points, that, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, that get people hooked initially. You know, mm -hmm. I think that gets a lot of people mm -hmm. into the service when they first start using it, until they get to the point where they see what the real utility is. Mm -hmm. So again, it's about finding new places, meeting up with friends, learning about what you should be doing when you're at a particular mm. place, and just learning about all of the interesting things near you. And as we get more data from you know, these mm. five million people a day checking in, we can make those other services even better. So I think mm. people are starting to understand that it's much more than a game, but that's a big challenge of my job, is mm. getting them to understand what we're yeah. actually trying to accomplish with the product. What happens with Guala, for example? I, I started using Guala from, from the beginning, and yeah. I, for some reason I just you know, converted into to Foursquare and I stuck in Foursquare. I, I don't even no. I, I don't say this to be kind, but uh -huh. I, I don't even use um, uh, paper places. Yeah, well, they kind of phase that out. They pr they're putting less of an emphasis on that, and obviously, Gowala was acquired by Facebook. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, we we try to stay pretty focused on what we're doing. So we just we had a very clear idea of what we wanted the product to look like mm -hmm. a year down the road, two years down the road, and we mm -hmm. just worked as hard as we could to execute on that. And we kept picking up users and. I don't know where some others didn't. So mm. we feel very lucky, but we also feel like, again, it's because we have that laser focus on location and such a clear idea of what the product should mm. look like. Mm. When, when, when you, uh, this Adam, uh, yep. at the, I'm pointing to this <laughs> direction, uh, at their Singa, Singa yes. site, yep. you know, they have a community. Yep. You know, I, I realize that you know, their, their services are something else. It's game, different kind of games, right? On different kind of mm -hmm. platforms. Uh, so there's different, th th and, and your web page is still your 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 service, right? Right. So th there's there's difference, but but you haven't got any like community there, some community. Uh, oh, like community boards where people can yeah, interact they have with each yeah. Other. You can go to your 
web page and you know interact different kind of experiences no that not really the services it's more stuff. about the the web page is more of a destination for getting information about venues so you can see yeah. a news feed of what your friends are doing on the home page but mostly mm. it's where you go to you know use explore and find different places that you might want to check mm. out when you're traveling or that weekend in your own city but it's not as much a place to go and engage with other people in the Foursquare community mm. okay so so your uh, communication with your you know users influencers people that you know are you know engage in in uh, checking in and mm -hmm. stuff could be yours could be others mm -hmm. people could be people that using places for example mm -hmm. other places where do you meet these guys are you using the facebook as a platform or google plus as a platform as well or our users where the no yeah, if you you know meet people on facebook have you a facebook page for example or a google plus page or where do you meet these guys except from your own services I do realize that you, you're meeting your people on your own services, right? Yeah. They are where they are. You right, know. right. But are you using other kind of platform as well? To pick up users? Not pick up users, just, you know, engage with these people. We do use, yeah, we, we I mean, we're on Facebook, we're on Google+, we're on mm. Twitter, we have a blog, and usually when we have a big announcement, we'll put it on the blog, you know, do press outreach, and then push it to all of those other social mm. networks. So mm. We want to be everywhere that our mm. users are, and they're on all those services. Yeah. But the, the, the biggest part of your enga the engagement with your you know, stakeholders or, or users uh, is on your own service, right? Yeah, Not yeah. on Google Plus page. Right, right. No. A, lot of it, a, a lot of people come to the blog. We get a lot of traffic to the blog. And a lot of the growth has been organic. Like We mm. started seeing a ton of growth internationally before we had any kind of presence internationally. We just mm. hired our first person in the UK in November of last mm. year, and already 50% of our usage is outside of the US. So oh, a lot wow. of it is just people learning about it on their own um, and kind of spreading the, mm. the word about Foursquare organically. And we're continuing to see huge growth outside of the US. Are they sharing the experiences uh, on the other kind of platform as well? If they have photo stuff, you know, are they uploading this? On your yeah, I mean, a, a fair Facebook? amount of people connect. You have to opt into doing that. So you have to mm. choose to link your Foursquare account to Twitter or to Facebook mm. or to both. And then every time you check in, we ask you, if you want to push to either one of those networks mm. Um, mm. or if you don't want to push to any of those networks and you just want to share mm. with your uh, Foursquare friends. And for many people, that's a much tighter social graph. Your mm. Foursquare friends are the people that you mm. actually hang out with day to day. For a lot of people, I think the average number of friends on Foursquare is seven, mm. which I imagine is much smaller than yeah. it is on yeah. other networks. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. But you still have a, you know, a, a site and you have an about, uh, you know, link mm -hmm. there. There's mm -hmm. some releases uh, and there's some newsroom, right? Or something, yep. yeah. Yeah, there's some corporate information uh, on there. Corporate information, yeah. And this is mainly for journalists and stuff, I yes. guess? Yep. Yeah. So are you, are you continuing to work like on this traditional way? We were talking about that you're not you doing yeah, it anymore. Yeah, so that much. site I put up <laughs> way back in the day, in the early days, yeah. just to answer a lot of the general questions I was getting over and over again mm -hmm. from reporters. How how many users do you have now? How many employees are you? Mm -hmm. Who are your investors? When were you founded? So really basic info. Mm -hmm. But that's not at all how we communicate the majority of our information. That mm -hmm. page is pretty static. So mm -hmm. I think the only thing that changes on the about site regularly is. Mm -hmm the list of employees. We actually mm. still list every single mm. employee at the company. We might mm. stop that at some point, but. But you can still imagine if you, if you have a, um, um, you know, a, a Facebook page, for an example, mm -hmm. and, and you, you, you have a lot of updates and people are writing on your walls, blah, blah, and there's a lot of consumer stuff, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, and that might not be so interesting for journalists. Could be, mm -hmm. it could be not. So, and when you say it is pretty static information, right. I, I can realize it could be very much, much more dynamic. You know, there's yeah. so much happening in your organization that right. could be interesting for journalists. Are you working with that as well, or is that? Not really. I mean, we tend to, if we're announcing something, we, we tend to have, you know, in-person communication, or we talk on the phone, or mm. we email with reporters. I don't think that the About page is the way, the primary source of information mm. for anyone we work with. No. They know if no. they have a question about anything, they come mm. to us, or if we have a story mm. we, want, we want to work with them on, we mm. go to them. So mm. that's not really, we might at some point, you know, we have the blog, I guess you could say that's mm. kind of like the press archive. Yeah because yeah. we put all of our major announcements on there, but we don't really have any plans to mm. have a more dynamic press but room. The funny thing is also, because we're not talking about journalists anymore. Uh, yeah, they are important mm -hmm. in some way, could be, uh, but there's uh, tons of you know thought leaders and, mm -hmm. and you know spokesmen, and what they have common with the journalists is the information advantage. Mm -hmm. They need the information advantage, mm -hmm. otherwise they, they, they lose their authority. Mm -hmm. So this is our interesting, and there's so many of these guys. Right. So and they would like the core information from right. you guys. So uh, that's on the blog primarily, I would say. You so can you're find using your blog as a, as a newsroom or yes. Less than yeah, I would okay. say that's that's accurate. Every major announcement is on the blog. Mm. Yeah. But, but you can't, you know, upload, you know, high resolution. 
photos and stuff on the blog. Oh, we do put it. We we put screenshots and photos, and we link to other content and yeah. Okay, so your blog is uh, as a you know a new version of, of a traditional newsroom, you would say. Yeah, I would say that's accurate. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right. Yeah, I have nothing to more. Okay. Say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Great you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Me too.